MSI, three letters you might see stamped on your graphics card. Maybe you look down and it's on your peripherals, like your keyboard and mouse, but they also make game pads and they ain't new. They had the GC20, then the GC30, now the GC30 V2. This is my first hands-on test of an MSI controller, and I'm glad that I can start with the best of the best. The best of the best of the best. And if you're looking for a $35 game pad on PC or Android, this just might be the one for you. We're going to review it on a multitude of categories, including D-pad, thumbsticks, warranty, and input delay on the PC. And we'll find out if MSI makes a good game pad or if they should stick to graphics cards. This is your controller captain. We've reached 6,900 feet. Go ahead and start flicking the sticks and molly in the back paddles. Mm, you don't like back paddles? How about those rear buttons? We've, We've tested, tested almost 100, 100 custom and premium controllers, controllers and we're only at the beginning. You need a thumbstick guide or tutorial on how to overclock your controller? Check out the controller playlist. Bing bong. Controller captain out. Now over here on MSI.com or MicroStar International's website, if you just found out that MSI stands for MicroStar International, a like on the video would greatly be appreciated. Now I love to take a tour of these landing pages, particularly on these inexpensive game pads, we'll say sub $60 because it's hilarious what the manufacturers are going to list as selling factors. For example, dual vibration motors. You might think that's a standard feature that comes with all controllers, but when we're penny pinching in a controller that you know the manufacturing costs are dirt cheap, be thankful to have a couple of rumble force motors strapped in the palms. Durable switches. We're going to talk about the tap life cycle in a minute. It's really nothing to write home about. Additional D-pad cover. That is nice to see. Well, since MSI decided to say that they have improved thumbsticks or analog sticks, I'll, I'll be the judge of it. We shall see about it. And this is interesting, 256 different steps or linear pressure sensitive levels of adjustments. So you're trying to modulate the throttle and brake in a racing game. You'll be able to do it with these triggers. Ooh, something I don't like to see. Is that a micro USB port on top? You bet your ass it is. And MSI is flexing those digital or mechanical switches saying that the competitors rock 1 million clicks. Well, the two competitors that come to mind that use digital switches would be Razer that have a tap life cycle of 3 million clicks and AIM that has a tap life cycle of 10 million clicks. Those are both substantially more expensive controllers, though. Now, to give MSI some credit here, I do believe when they're saying competitors, they are referring to stock membrane switches, which have a rumber plunger mechanism underneath the front shell. And yes, those are rated for, well, they're not rated for jack shit, but it would be well under a million clicks before you start getting face buttons and D-pads all jammed in, stuck to high hell. And you need to partially disassemble your controller and clean the plunger with some isopropyl alcohol. I'm just going to give them the credit that they're not saying competitors that use mechanical switches. You do have a swappable D-pad cover. We'll talk about it during the d-pad section and it says dual vibration motors and these are actual haptic feedback motors and you do have two modes of connectivity you are going to have this little 2.4 gigahertz dongle which is quite small i really genuinely hate with a passion to see micro usb cables in 2023 i think that the norm the new universal standard should be usb c except for apple because they do their lightning hail natural disaster plug android 4.1 and above so no ios support here if you're on a apple tablet or phone just fuck right off 600 million amp hour, which is physically quite small, but that will get you around eight hours of usage. Depending if you get the black or white variant, the controller on the cover will be different. You do have a little plastic pull tab atop. If you want to pause the screen to read some of the key features, you may do so now. Controller, dongle, and D-pad ring are going to be held in this plastic cover, which is covered with a plastic bag. Cables behind the controller. Something to note, the instruction manual was creased or bent. So as you can see from the table of contents, if you are in North America or an English speaking individual, English is spoken in the nooks and crannies of this blue planet. But if English is your native tongue, ladies, you're only gonna need pages three to six. The only picture is this very small black and white diagram, but the font is decently large and easy to read. It is decent. As soon as I touched the controller, it started flashing these three red LED lights. I woke her up, go, go back to sleep, please. This is another one of those controllers, brand new in box, sealed, and and it's dirty. I'm not saying it's filthy, but there's like some black rubber on the thumbsticks there. Oh, I can't even get that off. It's like stained on there. There we go. I had to use a finger now. Yeah, that feels like a $35 gamepad. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but this is very reminiscent to me of cheaper third-party gamepads that I used to use as a kid. So in the 90s and early 2000s, you don't really feel these plastics anymore, or if you do, you know what it is? It's the shape. This is very similar to an Xbox 360 controller. Maybe that is what is giving me that nostalgia flashback to fuck, this feels cheap. So this is a wireless Xbox 360 controller licensed Microsoft version. And as you can see, the shell design is almost 
identical. This is for sure modeled after the Xbox 360 controller, which is a good thing in my opinion. We'll talk about it more during the ergonomics and comfort section. As for cosmetics, this controller does come in a black and white variant, and I can't strongly enough recommend the white variant because not only does the white faceplate look cooler, but you get these black face buttons and then the MSI logo pops a little bit more hard. The black face buttons look a lot better than those multicolored buttons on the black variant. And IMO, it's a no-brainer to pick up the white variant. It's personal opinion, that's all that is. But since I know everyone wants a grade, a rating, and the thumbsticks, these rubberized grips, bumpers, triggers, and this little side trim piece are kind of a beige or a, like a warm eggshell, and then you have like a brighter white on the faceplate, that's an eight. That's an eight out of 10 cosmetics-wise all day. MSI's manufacturer weight and dimensions is gonna be popping up on screen, but as far as the actual ergonomics and comfort, this is a very comfortable gamepad because it is using a shell design almost identical to an Xbox 360 controller, which has always been very comfortable comfortable for my hands. In addition to this, you also have these little rubberized pads or strips on each side, which don't give you a whole lot of coverage, but the little bit that is covered does feel quite nice. Thumbsticks do nothing, especially for comfort, as they are incredibly slick. These don't even feel like rubber. These literally feel like, I think these are plastic. I really do. I don't even think this is rubber or silicone. This is like hard plastic. Other than the stock thumbstick caps feeling incredibly cheap and not good on the fingertips, this is a very comfortable controller. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. As for perceived build quality, it actually isn't terrible for a $35 controller. Yes, the plastics do feel quite cheap, but so do a lot of $250 controllers. The only thing I really don't like is the way that they link the rear shell and the front faceplate with this little brown centerpiece. It looks and feels incredibly cheap. If you want to disassemble your controller, it is quite easy. You do have six Phillip head screws in the back and a little reset button if you're having issues with your controller. I'm going to go ahead and give perceived build quality a five out of 10. A little skittledy biddle right down the middle. And if you do run into any issues with your MSI gamepad, keyboard, mouse, any peripherals, you have 12 months of coverage one year. So not the three years of coverage with MSI graphics. Cards. As for the D-pad or direction buttons, it's definitely a creeper on this controller because at first I absolutely hated it. It felt super squishy, mushy, none of my inputs felt direct, but then after actually playing with it for a while, getting a little bit more stick time, it grew on me. Now my initial feelings do still stand. It is very squishy and mushy, and that's because it is a membrane switch. And even for a membrane switch, it's very like a little bowl of mashed potatoes right there for you. It's like a little bowl of oatmeal with a hole in it. So you do have two options. It is magnetized. They pop on and off. You have this wheel over here, which I would recommend for fighting games. You can do roll-offs and whatnot. But for other games, you might want to go with a traditional four-point D-pad and you have that option as well. Cosmetically, I do think they look nice with this silver or gunmetal gray. But the D-pad's got to be one of my least favorite parts on this controller. I'm going to give it six out of 10. Repeat a six out of 10. It would be lower. It'd be around a four. However, since it's a $35 controller that has two swap options, uh, you don't really see that feature in this price point. Now, as to the face or action buttons, I'm not going to spend a whole heck of a lot of time here because you can tell the MSI didn't either. These are very cheap membrane switches and they feel very similar to an Xbox 360 controller. Weird. I mean, th those felt phenomenal for the time, but we didn't really have a great point of reference because that was, that was years ago. We've experienced a lot of controllers since then, you and I. We've had our hands on a lot of game pads since then. The shape of Xbox 360 buttons being very rounded isn't my favorite. However, they are pretty short to actuate, about one millimeter and do feel decently tactile and give you a nice little positive click. Not mechanical or anything, but you know, somewhat satisfying to press. No complaints here. We'll get the job done. So I'm going to give it a six out of 10. Repeat a six out of 10. As for the accessory button suite, so that's going to be the start and back button, this MSI shield, as well as guess what? That micro USB port up there. I got to loop that in somewhere. It's going to take a couple of points. This is 2023 and we're still rocking micro USB. Mm -hmm. Also, despite the fact that this MSI logo in the middle looks really cool, it actually feels kind of cheap. And while the start and back buttons are in a good place. I wish they were either a little bit wider or a little bit further out of the front shell. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10 for the accessory button suite. Now as for the thumbsticks, analog sticks, or joysticks, whoo boy, as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't even feel like rubber. It feels like plastic. Just to confirm that, when I take my fingernail and gouge into it, trying to make an indentation or a mark in it, which should be very easy on rubber thumbsticks, it's pretty much unscathed. So these are like plastic thumbsticks. <laughs> Why? The first thing you should do when you pick up this controller, in fact, order these along alongside this controller, get yourself some thumbstick caps. You don't have to break the bank with some licensed control freaks. Granted, they do feel the best. You could get some generic slip over caps because those work with just about anything. As far as control freaks compatibility, we're going to test them right now because these are just, <sighs> these are white galaxies for PlayStation 4 and 5. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, a little too tight. And since these aren't rubber thumbsticks, they're pretty much plastic or the hardest rubber I've ever seen in my life. There's no give in it. They're not very pliable. So these caps don't really snap on if they're not a perfect fit. These are red infernos for Nintendo Switch Pro controllers. I, I don't feel comfortable with it. And these are for Xbox One and series. Definitely not because they're the smallest of 
all three of the options. Oh, does that leave you with your cheese out in the wind? Not really. There's universal slipover caps, for example, these ones from Play Vital that will work with anything because they're universal. You know what else has the word universal in it? The scuff caps, which I have right here as well. Let's test those. Now with the scuff kit, it does come with two different size plastic rings or dishes. So they both snapped on pretty easily. However, the one I have on the right stick is actually a little bit loose and wiggly, but would still be totally usable. The one on the left is much more firm and barely has any give in it. I like that. Before I can give these thumbsticks a proper grading, we need to get a little bit of technical analysis, if you will, on the PC. When I first plugged this gamepad in, it looked like the right analog stick had stick drift as it was locked back right around this region here. However, I just unplugged it and plugged it right back in the old IT fix and smoothed it right out. And these actually look phenomenally calibrated right out of the box with a great resting value. Dead zones are also very tight and responsive as I barely start feathering over the thumbsticks and starts registering my inputs. Love to see that. Let's test the circularity. Do a slow spin for me. Holy sh... Wow. Um, let's run a couple more just to confirm what I am seeing here. So remarkably low numbers in the circularity test. And remember, lower value better. But these are phenomenal in that aspect. Thumbstick accuracy. All of your movements are getting registered. While the thumbstick modules are clearly very high quality, I'm not sure where MSI sourced them from. Definitely not Alps. Not with those resting values and not with that circularity test. But what's going to dock a couple of points in this segment is going to be the thumbstick caps. They're plastic, not rubber. Or if it is rubber, it does not feel like it. I'm going to be giving the thumbsticks a 7. 7.5 out of 10. It'd probably be a 9 out of 10, but the fact that no licensed control freaks fit properly on here, yeah, you could snap them on there. You can do that with damn near any thumbstick if you don't mind damaging them. But very limited thumbstick cap compatibility. The stock caps are not grippy at all, but the modules are very well calibrated and very tight, which is even more important because you can just pop on some caps. 7.5 out of 10. As for the bumpers, the shape is also very similar to the Xbox 360, except there's also these little lines cut in here, which you think would add a little bit of grip, but it really doesn't. These plastics feel very, very cheap. They're also pretty noisy, which I'm not a big fan of, and it feels very hollow and tinny inside of here. And since they're pretty tiny, there's a very small sweet spot where you can actually actuate these properly, which would be from like right about here to here. 3 out of 10. 3 out of 10. As for the triggers, they are very reminiscent of the layout of an Xbox 360 controller, but again with these lines cut in here, which does add a little bit of grip for your fingers. On the landing page, it lists several steps or levels of adjustment, and these do have a good amount of resistance, and I do like that. I'm going to give the triggers an 8 out of 10. Repeat, an 8 out of 10. These actually feel really nice. Running a thousand sample tests and X input tests to get our stock input lag or delay, which looks like it's going to be about four milliseconds. Tons of outliers, just ignore those crap wagons. Four milliseconds of input lag or delay on a 250 hertz stock clock if you are taking the wired method to PC. How about that wireless dongle? Not as fast with the wireless dongle, looking about 16 milliseconds, which is actually identical to the Xbox wireless adapter for Windows that I tested recently on the channel. Having to spin this stick a long time to finish the test. Still going. So ignoring these outliers, which there is 61 of them, my goodness gracious, the jitter is much higher. It's also less consistent of a connection. 16 milliseconds with that wireless adapter. Plugged back in via micro USB cable so we can overclock. We are recognized as an Xbox 360 controller for Windows. Just to confirm that, unplug it, it'll disappear. Replug it, and there she is. You know what controller this is. Had to unplug and replug a couple times. Controller not overclocked on a stock clock for an estimated 16 milliseconds of input lag or delay. Let's remedy it right now. It is overclocked to a thousand hertz for an estimated one millisecond of input lag or delay. Let's test the theory. Oh, so that's definitely faster. How much faster? Double. I'm seeing a lot of 1.9s in there, two point flats, ignoring the outliers here. So now you're getting about two milliseconds on a 500 hertz clock. So this is susceptible to being overclocked. Very impressive. Can you overclock the wireless dongle? Let's find out. Interesting. So the dongle is still recognized as that same HID compliant controller, and it's saying that it still has that overclock. So that dongle communicates the same with the PC as going wired, but slower, obviously, because there is a wireless connection there. But unfortunately, the tail is a little bit different and the overclock is not reflected on that wireless dongle. So you're still getting that 16 milliseconds of input lag or delay. And if you're just playing casually and not doing any competitive hubbub, the convenience of being wireless is nice. As for modes of connectivity, you can go wired or with that wireless dongle to your Windows 10 or 11 PC as we did throughout this video. However, you can also connect via a USB-C cable to an Android device to a tablet or phone, and this works seamlessly. I had a viewer recently asked in the comment section a good budget gamepad he could go wired on android devices and this is perfect for that cosmetically this looks very nice in this white trim and it has a lot of features that you don't see in controllers at this price point for example those thumbstick modules which are still potentiometer based but it had pretty much the best circularity test results i've ever seen the swappable magnetic d-pads is a nice touch and i do like the resistance on the triggers overall just a solid cheap gamepad it is linked in the description below and i'll see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow 
Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. To get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of Gamer Heaven, join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where I go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my pH balance is on point. Just kidding. Starting June, I'm going to be live streaming a lot. Thanks for watching. This has been AK40 Kevin hosting Gamer Heaven and I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily all the time, 60% of the time, sometimes, most of the time. Peace.